This is a review of calculating the magnetic field of a long straight wire. This is where I always start when we're looking at the various different ways of calculating a magnetic field due to various sources. A current produces magnetic field B, units Tesla, that goes around a wire rather than away from a charge. This is our basic conceptual difference that we need to focus on when learning this material. Our electric fields were parallel to a radial vector, but magnetic fields are not. The reason is there is no magnetic charge, like a little individual north, that would produce a magnetic field. Magnetic fields do not diverge from any source charge. Instead, they circulate around a wire in a right-handed direction. I won't say much here because we'll focus our time in class on this idea. But get this picture straight in your mind. Magnetic fields form closed loops around that source current. In contrast, electric fields diverge from a source charge. When we've got a long straight wire, those fields form circles around the wire. As a result, they're going to be in the theta hat direction perpendicular to the vector r. When we're using, uh, say, plane polar coordinates, that is cylindrical coordinates that are r theta k. The magnetic field vector is always tangent to the circular field lines. The circular field lines you see are in the right-handed direction, as illustrated down below. That right-hand rule comes from a vector cross product. As an aside, I emphasize the vector calculations of magnetic fields for two reasons. One is just to reinforce the concept that the field does go around the wire, but the other is to actually learn to use the cross product. Everyone taking this class will need to calculate cross products in a future class. Almost everyone's going to take some kind of mechanics class where you're going to have to calculate torque using the vector cross product. In principle, you'd learn that in Calc 3. In principle, you would have learned it in Physics 1. But by emphasizing it here in Physics 2, I want to reinforce the learning of this, of this particular skill uh, in all three of those classes. You would also use it if you'd study fluid dynamics, such as turbulent airflow around an airfoil or antenna design in an electronics class. OK, the result we use, shown in this equation here, comes from the Biot-Savart law. To evaluate the evalu Biot-Savart law, you have to do an integral that's worked out in example 26.5 in our textbook. What it results in is that the current I in a straight infinitely long wire, where the wire's direction is given by a unit vector L hat, can be found from u naught i over 2 pi r, l hat cross r hat, where r and r hat come from the position vector r. That position vector points from the wire, where the current is flowing, to the field point. And our current is plus if it's in the same direction as l hat. We'll work in the special case of the xy plane in cylindrical coordinates, that is r theta z, or xy z coordinates. Most of the time, we'll use Cartesian coordinates. The magnetic field, then, at a position r from the wire is given by mu naught i over 2 pi r k hat cross r hat, because the current is flowing in the k hat direction. Our strategy is the same as always. Once we have interpreted the problem as being a long wire producing a magnetic field, we'll draw, develop, draw a diagram that includes the r vector from the source to the field point define it in terms of its components in meters. Then, as our develop step continues, write down the equation, the one you just saw, use our r vector to define the magnitude and unit vectors, and evaluate our expression. Again, as before, I'll be following a particular tactical approach to the calculation, like I did for electric fields. That approach makes sure that we use vector arithmetic, using what we know about vectors to do our calculations. This makes our approach to every problem the same so that this general approach will reduce the kinds of errors that you can make if you take a sort of slapdash methods for calculating various fields. The same approach to a problem is always the most effective one, and much better than ad hoc methods involving guessing. Our guessing will always be done at the assessment step. There's only a few differences from our strategy 20.1. We're now doing it for a magnetic field rather than an electric field, but the basic skills are the same. Here's the equation we're going to evaluate, mu naught over 2 pi r k cross r hat, where r hat is r vector over r. 
and mu naught is the constant 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per ampere. And again, our vector points from the current to where we want B. If there's a force that we need to calculate later on, that is done as a separate problem. Always calculate the magnetic field B first at the point where the force would be applied, then calculate the force on some particle or current at that point. Two separate problems. Okay, there's also two kinds of cases here. There's a special case when R is parallel to an axis. In that case, when we separate R vector into its two components, K cross R hat will be something like K cross I hat or K cross J hat, and that will point in the theta hat right-hand rule direction. And I write it this way just as a reminder that you can actually separate magnitude and direction in that particular problem. However, for most of you, it's safest to always do the general approach to the problem, what's shown down below here, and that we must use that when, we're, when our vector is not parallel to an axis. In that case, we just substitute r hat uh, as r vector over r, combine the two radius distances, and get mu naught i over 2 pi r squared k hat cross r vector. Okay, first, an example where the field is on an axis. Uh, I show a dot for the current indicating that my pictures are going to represent a current that is positive, that is coming out of the page, and we're going to want to want the field on the x-axis. The r vector is just 0.04 i hat, and here in orange I show a pre-assessment of what the field is going to be. The field is going to be perpendicular to r vector in a right-handed sense. It's in the plus j hat direction because that is the direction that a counterclockwise rotation around a circle would flow. But we're going to get that from using the vectors. Our drawing says our vector looks like some number x times i hat, so the magnitude is just x, and the r hat is i hat. We'll then get b as being mu naught over 2 pi x j hat because k cross i hat is j. But as I just showed you, you could also have gotten that j hat from the right-hand rule. Computing, we're just going to have mu naught over 2 pi is 2 times 10 to the minus 7. Multiply that times the current i, divided by x. In this case, the sign of the current is entered there when you plug in the number for i. And r hat has been already accounted for in the uh, calculating the unit vector j hat. Be careful. The sign for i should be clear from your setup and easy to enter correctly. The sign for r hat is easy to get wrong. Be sure you've identified it clearly in a drawing and included in your final expression, including the sign, and then combine those signs with the rest of the numbers. So you've got magnitude and direction, where there is a sign in the direction and a sign perhaps in the magnitude from the current. Assess it with the right-hand rule. Here our B field is in the plus J hat direction because the counterclockwise rotation around that positive current is in the plus J hat direction over there. But if we are in the negative X side, then the positive current would produce a negative J hat unit vector. Our assessment should always check that the magnetic field from a positive current is rotating sort of counterclockwise around that circle, tangent to the circle, and for a negative current into the board into the paper that that circulation is then clockwise. Assess it. Be sure your answer is in the expected direction. A common error is to use the sign of the current twice. Once they get the direction from the right-hand rule, doing that sort of separately by hand, and again a numerical value of the current. I want to illustrate this. Here, if the current is negative, that is into the page, indicated by the cross for the current, then the magnetic field is going to be the opposite direction. Our right-hand rule with our thumb into the paper produces a circulation that is clockwise, so B is negative J hat. There's two ways to get this correct. One way is to do what we just did. R hat is plus I hat. I is a negative number, so mu naught I over 2 pi R is a negative number that multiplies positive J hat, giving us a negative J hat answer. The second way to do the problem is have the magnitude of the field, mu naught i over 2 pi r, where i is a positive number, and get the negative j hat from the right-hand rule. As I just described, because our thumb is in the paper, the field must be in the negative j hat direction. You can't do both. Okay, 
arbitrary point, the most general method, and the one that most of you should, in fact, use. Here, the current is at the origin out of the paper. We want to find the field at a fairly simple point on a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Draw our R vector from the current to the field point. Write down what that vector is from looking at the picture, 0.04 i hat plus 0.03 j hat. Here I've pre-assessed the magnetic field. It will be perpendicular to that R vector, tangent to a circle of radius R in a counterclockwise direction around the current. This we can use to check our answer when we're done. Formally, we've got a vector R that looks like x i hat plus y j hat. Write down our general expression for B, mu naught i over 2 pi r k cross r hat. Replace r hat with our vector over r, so we've got mu naught i over 2 pi r squared equals k hat cross r vector. Then replace our vector with what we've just obtained from our picture, x i hat plus y j hat, and do the cross product. k cross i will be j, so the x component from r shows up in the y component of b with a plus sign. k cross i is j. k cross j is negative i. k cross j is negative i means the x component of b will be calculated from the negative of the y component of r. Doing this carefully is a crucial thing in getting the right answer and also why you need to assess what you're doing. Always start with the standard form of the equation, rewrite it symbolically, fill in the vector components for r, and compute. The computing step is like we've done before. Find the magnitude of r from the square root of x squared plus y squared. Write it down just for safety and clarity. And then mu naught over 2 pi, 2 times negative 7, times the current divided by answer squared, times x will give me the j hat component. When you do that, be sure you write it down in the right place in your vector expression. Then I can take my answer from that step, multiply it by negative y, and divide by x. An easy way to do that is you change sign of your answer, divide by x, multiply by y. That's then the x component. Once again, any signs for the current for x component or y component are entered into this expression when you do the calculation. If you tend to mess up which is x and which is y, always calculate the x component first from the equation up above. In that case, you do mu naught i over 2 pi answer squared times change sign y. Okay? Then divide by change sign y and multiply by x. For, again, if, Find one way that works for you. Do every problem the same way. Assess your answer. Again, I'll repeat. I never mess around trying to get the direction by hand. I do the vector field calculation formally and carefully and check it by hand whenever I've got a field in some arbitrary place and often when I'm doing the simple cases as well. For this problem, that field is again in the negative x plus y direction because it's tangent to a circle at the point where we wanted the field. This is our assessment. It must be tangent to the circle going around the current. If we've got more than one current, we have to do more than one problem. Always do two separate problems, add the vector answers together, and that gives you your final answer. You should always write down several guard digits from any answer that you use as an intermediate value so that you don't have rounding errors when you add them together, particularly if one of the results is negative so there's some cancellation. And as before, these figures all come from the textbook that we use for this course.